Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Ball. Thanks for being with us. Today, the title of our show is Boom, Bubble, or Bust. Yes, we're talking about the commercial real estate cycle, where we are in the cycle, what might happen as interest rates rise. Please welcome my next guest is Todd Coleman. Todd is CEO of CRE Tech. He's also a CCIM instructor. Todd, thanks for joining us on Skype today. Thanks, Michael. Good to be here. Now, I know you said that shirt's red, but on Skype, it's looking real purple, <laughs> real tacky. <laughs> well, it's uh, the holiday season, so I thought I'd dress in uh, Christmas red, but uh, you know how Skype and technology works. Yeah, there you go. It, it, it brings out my true colors, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, <laughs> as, as I said in the opening, and uh, it, commercial real estate and, and the real estate in general uh, always cycles, right? And uh, so where are we right now on the cycle? People are wondering uh, if we're at the top and uh, we're seeing the highest prices that we're going to see. Well, that's a great question, and I'm going to go back a little bit to some of the previous conversations I've had. In 2007, in August 2007, I came out with a video similar to what you're doing now in talking about how we were at the top of a credit crash, and a lot of changes were happening on Wall Street at that time. So I kind of warned at that time of an impending correction in the market. Well, oh, you know, and, that was, and that was go-go days, right? <laughs> that, that was 2007 was one of the best days. Yeah. In fact, if you look back, that was August 2007. If you look back to uh, the top of the market in the entire 2000 to 2010 realm, the peak of prices hit in September 2007, a month after that video was done. I think we're pretty much in the similar type boat right now. In fact, today, now, what'd prices... You say, and what did you say in that video? Well, I said that uh, the credit markets on Wall Street are changing that they're not lending anymore as they have been before and that we need to prepare for a correction in the marketplace. You can uh, you can go to YouTube, you can search for that video. It's Todd Kuhlman Credit Crunch. It's on there, it's still on there. I can't get rid of it, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, so where are we today? You think we're in a similar well, spot then? Well, what's interesting about that is we saw the market indicators coming in August, September, uh, August, September 2007 but the correction really didn't impact everybody until a year later. In fact, Lehman Brothers didn't fall until September 2008, uh, 13 months after that video was done. So I think we're kind of in the same situation here. What's wonderful about real estate compared to other investments that you have, such as gold, such as stocks and other things, is you can basically look and predict some of these cycles. And I tell people, I say it's great when you have an up and down market because if you understand and you can get in front of that market that's when you make the money so if you're buying low and selling high which we all want to do hey this is a great market to do that in you just have to follow the cycles and sometimes it's really hard for us we get into a situation where we just love all the exciting stuff and everything's going up and up and up and better and better and better in fact we are at about hundred and twenty percent of the pricing value that we were at at the peak of September 2007, we're 20% above the pricing schedule that we were then, uh, right before that correction. I'll call it a correction instead of a crash, <laughs> but right before that correction incurred. So, and I tell people, I, so, I tell real estate brokers, I tell investors, I say, this is not a bad thing. It's a typical market cycle. When you don't make money in real estate is when the market stays absolutely uh, horizontal. But when you can make money is when the market's on an uptick and you can make money on the downswing. So you just have to know when those cycles are adjusting. So I'm going to be very positive about this. If you can stay in front of this curve, you can help make money. Again, buy low, sell high. <laughs> buy low, sell high. You heard it here, <laughs> right? Well, so Todd, the good times are certainly here right now. How long is this going to last? Well, we have a bunch of different variables and a bunch of different factors coming into play. And I know you've had a lot of great uh, guests on here, and you've got some more guests showing up with their different uh, perspectives on this. So I'll take my perspective on this, uh, the interest rate perspective as well as the demand perspective. You have to kind of balance both of those. Right now in my market, which is Austin, Texas, and so many markets like Austin are real high-tech driven. 
And so I, I want to keep a close eye on technology. We have a tremendous amount of venture capital funds still going into the tech fields. I think you need to keep an eye closely on that venture capital. If you can have that as one of your indicators on is this venture capital still flowing or is it slowing? And so as the uh, technology starts to progress, I think we, we can really identify what's going to happen in that technology market because that's a demand driver. The other thing that's a demand driver is the international amount of international influx of money coming in, places like Asia and China, a lot of money coming into our markets that are driving a lot of these prices. And they're not so concerned about the return on those investments as well as they are pres preservation of their capital. So you've got these two different factors that I would really keep a close eye on is in addition to the interest rate factor. So you got to look at the interest rate factor as well. So do you expect a correction and when? Well, I, I think right now, and this is a great time to be doing this interview, I think right now this is the August 2007 discussion where I think we're still in a great time. I think we're still in a market that's plugging away. Uh, some markets are just starting to see, and, and you might have some frustration from some of your viewers, we're like, man, we just started this correction. What are you talking about? Now we're yeah. going to start this downswing? Well, some of us have been in this uh, correction for quite some time with the upswing for the last oh, four, five, six, seven years. But then you have a market like Phoenix. They're just in their second, third year of the correction, but they're correcting so fast. It's going up so fast uh, that that line is just goes going straight up. Well, you can't go straight up forever, Michael. You have to have a correction at some point. I think what you'll start seeing is the correction will begin. Well, I'll say a correction. The pricing adjustments will start when the interest rates start going up, and that's going to happen. That could happen this month in December. All right, so give us some ideas of cap rates down the road. I think one of the things as a CCIM instructor uh, that you can help us with is, you know, thinking about exit cap rates. So we're buying a property or we own it now at some point. Uh, we got to look at selling it. What would you look at exit cap rates down the road? Well, and this really prompted a lot of my analysis into this particular subject as I was working with some institutional investors uh, that was using our application, the Analyst Pro application. And what we were identifying was they're going in cap rates. They're still paying these high prices, meaning they're going in cap rates are still, you know, five, five and a half percent at the time of acquisition. But the institutional investors are starting to look at exit cap rates and increasing their exit cap rates in the future, meaning that if they're going to look at a three, five, six, seven year hold on an investment, they're actually adjusting their cap rates up as each year goes. And so we made an adjustment in our application, our analysis application, to allow for a variable cap rate at sale. So what somebody could do is when they purchase that property on day of acquisition, let's say they purchase it at the 5.5% cap rate, they could do an analysis and look at it and say, okay, well, in one year from now or two years from now, maybe we're going to sell it at a 6.5% cap, 1% higher. Maybe two years after that, it's going to be a 7.5% cap. And that's what we're seeing the institutional investors start to do in their upfront analysis is come in and say, hey, we're going to buy this property at this price today, but we're going to analyze and analyze the overall return or internal rate of return on that property based on a higher exit cap rate. So we're seeing cap rate rates of one to two percent over the next four to six years increasing on the property and as you know if cap rates go up and the NOI stays the same prices go down okay one to two percent you said in the next two to four years is that yeah I would I, I, I am seeing the institutional okay. investors and there's no reason that uh, and I preach this a lot meeting Wall Street and Main Street together meaning more the street broker that's doing your typical you know three to five million dollar transaction versus a fifty million dollar transaction there's no reason we can't be looking at exactly what Wall Street's doing institutional REIT pension fund life company investors are doing today and how they're analyzing their going out strategy or exit strategy on this we should be looking at very similar type scenarios so if I'm looking at buying something today which I'm looking at selling stuff today <laughs> if I'm looking at buying stuff today then I'm definitely looking at uh, uh, plugging in about a 2% cap rate. If I'm looking at a four to six year hold, my cap rate going out is 2% higher than going in. All right, well that means something from a CCM instructor and someone who predicted it back in 07. Todd Coleman, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure being here. We appreciate it. Well, stay tuned. We'll have more on this subject. Boom, bubble, or bust. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. 
The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, a great place to do business. Excelligent, information for the professionals. And Commercial Search, properties for sale and lease. To access these companies or for additional videos, podcasts, and articles, visit CREshow.com.